Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to build RESTful Python APIs in using Flask. Uh, so first you want to install Flask, I've already installed it so its requirements already satisfied. And then you're going to create a uh, Python file, I'm just going to call mine api.py. Um, I'm going to check all this code into GitHub so you can check it out there. Um, but this will explain a bit more about everything that I do. So I'm going to import JSON and I'm going to import um, Flask, JSONify and request from Flask. And this is going to be useful for building my APIs. First off, I'm going to create my app and this is where I'm going to define my different endpoints. So just create a Flask object. And then I'm just going to create a few um, variables to hold data. If you were um, doing this for real, you'd be connecting to a database probably and storing in your database. But I'm just going to have mine stored in this Python file here. Just make it real easy to show you the basics of how to set up um, APIs. So yeah, I'm going to create this employees list. It's going to have a number of employees with different IDs. I'm going to keep track of what ID is next using um, a field to define that. So just got a few different employees, one, two, and three with different names. And yes, I'll have this next um, employee ID, which will determine um, the next employee ID when I try to create an employee. So to define a route, you're just going to go at app.route give it the path name, so I'm going to give mine employees for the main get, this will return all the different employees, I'm going to specify the method, so I want this to be for the get, and then I'm going to define the function that will be called when I go to that route. So I'll define that, I'll just call it get employees, no parameters because I'm not getting any parameters from the um, route. And then I'm just going to return JSONify, which will basically turn this employees array into JSON and set the content type as um, JSON. So now I'm going to want another route and this one's going to be showing you how to add um, parameters. So say I want to get a specific employee, I'd specify the type and then the variable name there. And then once again, you specify any methods that you want to support. So once again, this is a get method and it's just going to get the specific employee by ID. So I'm just going to create a new function and name it get employee by ID. And it's going to take in an um, ID, which is, which is an integer. And it's just coming from the route. So I'm going to create a new function called get employee and I'm going to pass the ID to it. And basically that's going to go through my array and find the correct employee. And if it doesn't find one that, which has a matching ID, then it will return none. So next is basically going to get the um, first item that matches. So it'll go for each employee and it'll check this if e if the employee's ID is equal to the ID that I passed in, then it'll give that value. Otherwise, if there's none matching, it'll return none. So if employee is none, I'm going to want to um, show an error to the user and also return the 404 status. So I'll do return the same way. I'll do return JSONify and whatever data I want to return. Um, and the next parameter, uh, oh, you can also, you, if you do a um, comma, then you can specify what um, status code you want it to have. So for example, if I'm not finding the employee, I might put a 404. Cool. So now I can handle actually returning the found um, employee. So I'll return JSONify 
and employee. The default for status code is 200, so it's just going to assume it's succeeded basically, um, unless there's an internal server error, which basically means something's unhandled on your server side. So yeah, I've got my get all employees and I've got my get specific employee ID. Now I want to be able to create an employee, so I'm going to do app.route and I'm just going to go slash employees, but this time I'm going to work with the um, with the HTTP meta method posts so that I want to because I want to create. So this time you're going to get to see a few different status codes and how to set headers. Um, so I'm just going to go create employee and there will actually be um, a request body here. So that's what I'm going to be using to create the employee from. I'm just saying global next employee ID so I can update it and use it. So my employee is json.load and then request.data. So request.data is basically the body of the request. Um, and I'm just using json.loads to turn that into a Python dictionary. I want to check whether this um, employee is valid, so I'm going to create an employee is valid method and I'll pass in that employee. I've got a pretty simple check to check if an employee is valid. Basically, I'll loop through each of the keys in the employee and if any is not name, um, then that's the only sort of property I'm expecting. So if any is not named, then I'll basically handle that. So if key is not equal to name, return false because it's not valid. And if it gets through all the keys, then obviously it's true. It is valid because it's only got this name. I just realized now that I need to actually check if name is in there, but you know, you get the gist. It's going to not allow any extra data in. Um, so I'm going to return um, if the employee is not valid, I'll return an error message basically saying that. Um, and this time it's I'll give a status code of 400 because it's um, a bad request because I've supplied like an incorrect sort of um, request body. So yeah, status code of 400 this time. If the employee is valid, then I'm going to want to add it to my employees. Um, but first I'm going to need to set the ID. So I'll use that next employee ID and then go ahead and update that. That's why I needed to set it to be global. And then just add to that employees array with employees.append. So just add that employee in. And then I can return that um, I was um, successful in creating. So 201 is created. And then you're going to want to return a location header. And that's basically where people can go to get that employee, delete that employee. Um, put so update that employee so I basically pass slash employee slash um, the employee's ID just so people know how to get to that employee if they need to do things to that employee so it's pretty standard in um, RESTful API standards and now that I've done that I'm going to create a put so what a put does is it actually goes and creates, um, it goes and updates uh, um, the resource. So I'm going to slash employee slash um, int ID. It's because I need the ID so I know which employee to update. And this is a put. So I just create a function here for update employee 
and they'll have the parameter of the employee ID. I'm going to make sure that employee ID actually exists by calling get employee and um, returning an error if it's not. So used to putting brackets and if statements, but it's not really that like stylistic in Python. So yeah, don't mind me. Um, so yeah, if there is no employee, then it's going to be another 404 and the error that you've seen previously. So employee does not exist and a 404. So I'm going to want to get from the request body the updated employee. So I'll do that json.loads um, request.data again. And I'm just going to check the validity of that um, updated employee and if it's not valid once again I'm just going to return that it's invalid and with that 400 status code cool if it is valid then I'm going to want to go and update the employee so you can do that with an employee.update um, and it'll update any matching fields there Um, and then I am just going to return my response. So I'm going to return the updated, oh, I'm going to return the employee, which will actually be the updated employee. Um, and I'm also going to just leave it that because it will be status code 200, which is successful. You can look up um, what RESTful sort of API standards are if you're interested in them. Um, different people do different things, but yeah. Now I'm going to do the delete and it's very similar to the um, update in that I'll need the ID and the method will be for delete. So now I'm defining my deleted function, so delete employee, and it'll take in an ID. It's going to update employees, so that's why I've got global employees here. I'm just going to get the employee by ID just to check that exists. Once again, very similar to the update. Gonna copy and paste this error message actually will be a bit faster. Cool, so once again returning 404 and employee does not exist. If we get none back from that get employee function, and then what I'm going to want to do is define this new array E for E in employees if ID is not equal to the ID passed in because we don't want to include the employee to be deleted. Obviously, if you were using a database, you'd do something different here. You'd be actually deleting from the database, but I'm not using a database. I'm going to return the employee that's been deleted just to make life easy. Um, I've specified 200 status code there, but I didn't actually need to. And now I've go app.run 
and my code is ready to run. So if I go Python free um, API.py, then I can run it. And it tells you this is a development server. Do not use it in production deployment. Definitely recommend you follow that advice. Um, so, yep, I'm calling my get for all employees and I get the list of employees. If I do a post, then you can see down here I've got a header for location and it says 201 created as the status. Um, if I do a get on that specific employee, it returns them. So you can see them there. Now I can go ahead and do a get on all employees and you'll see them there with Chelsea spelling with a Y. But now I want to update it to spelling ending with an A. So I've done an update here. And now if I call this get employees API, you can see Chelsea with an A once again. Now I can go ahead and delete an employee. I'm going to delete an employee with the ID free. Cool, it returns the employee that was deleted. If I call that API again, you can see that Sally no longer is there with the employee ID free. And if I do a get and look to try and get the specific employee that doesn't exist, I do get the error that employee does not exist, but I do get the 404 there instead of the status. And so I think I've messed up the code up here. Oh yeah, you can see I've included that 404 inside the JSONify, it should be after. So if I stop and run again, then hopefully we'll have this working for you guys. Cool, so it says employee does not exist and a 404 not found. Now I'm going to just show you using um, an invalid property. So trying to update, um, create with an invalid property and that's not going to work. It says bad request and that's because of the um, invalid employee properties. That's pretty much all I have time to show you today and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content and I'll see you guys around.